Celtic Myths and Legends by T. W. Rolleston. Chapter 4 The Early Milesian Kings. Kimbe and the Founding of Emain Maka. With Kimbe, Kimbaoth, about 300. BCE, we come to a landmark in history. All the Irish records of the Irish prior to Kimbe were dubious, so with remarkable critical acumen for his age wrote the 11th century historian Pierna of Clan MacNoise. Omnia Monumenta Scotorum Ante Kimbaoth Nicerta Errant, Kierna, who died, 1088 of the Common Era, was abbot of Clang MacNoise, a great monarch and educational center in medieval Ireland. Medieval Ireland. There is much that is dubious in those that follow, but we are certain on firmer historical ground with the reign of Kimbe, one great fact emerges into light. We have the foundation of the kingdom of Ulster. At its center, a name Maka, a name redolent to the Irish student of legendary splendor and, hero and heroism. A name Maka is now represented by the grassy ramparts of a great hill fortress close to Ard Maka, or Mog. According to one of the gravitations offered in Kieting's History of Ireland, a main is derived from El Abodkin and Muin, the neck, the word being thus equivalent to a brooch. And Emain Maka means the brooch of Maka. An Irish brooch was a large circular wheel of gold or bronze crossed by a long pin, and the great circular rampart surrounding a Celtic fortress might well be imaginatively likened to the brooch of a giantess guarding her cloak or territory. Compare the fine poem of a modern Celtic writer, Sir Samuel Ferguson, The Widow's Cloak, i.e. the British Empire and the days of Queen Victoria. The legend of Maka tells that she was the daughter of Red Hugh, an Ulster prince who had two brothers, Pithorba and Kimbe. They agreed to enjoy, each in turn, the sovereignty of Ireland. Red Hugh came first, but on his death, Maka refused to give up the realm and fought Dithorba for it, whom she conquered and slew. She then, in equally masterful manner, compelled Kimbe to wed her and ruled all Ireland as queen. I give the rest of the tale in the words of Standish O'Grady, the five stun, the five sons of Dithorba, having been expelled out of Ulster, fled across the Shannon, and in the west of the kingdom plotted against Maka. Then the queen went down, alone into Connacht, and found the brothers in the forest, where wearied with the chase, they were cooking a wild boar with which they had slain and were carousing before a fire which they had kindled. She appeared in her grimmest aspect as the war goddess, red all over, terrible and hideous as war itself, but with bright and flashing eyes. One by one the brothers were inflamed by her sinister beauty, and one by one she overpowered and bound them. Then she lifted her burthen 
of champions upon her back, and returned with them into the north. With the spear of her brooch, she marched out on the plain, the circuit of the city of Emain Maka, whose ramparts and trenches were constructed by the captive princes, laboring like slaves under her command. The underlying idea of all this class of legend, remarks Mr. O'Grady, is that if men cannot master war, war will master them, and that those who aspired to the ard reship, high kingship, of all Erin must have the war entities on their side. Uh, Critical History of Ireland, page 180. Maka is an instance of the, uh, of the intermingling of the attributes of the Danan with the human race, of which I have already spoken. And I think he's missing the more, the more obvious point, is many a strong men have been misled or brought down because of their lack of control around women. <laughs> 